Hello, I'm back. Um, today I'm going to be going over the design for the 9 series portrait frame. I'm going to break it down for you and show you how to put images in the frame and how you can even um, change the color of the frame or the texture of the frame depending on your style. Um, I designed these because I couldn't afford to buy the frames yet and put my pictures in because it can get quite costly. So to show people that I do um, put everything in prints and I can put them in frames and I have them in matte. I simulated this in Photoshop and just kind of created these um, almost to size, uh, almost to scale I should say, frames and put them into my marketing pieces, specifically my um, PDF that I email to my clients to show them my work, um, the prices, what's involved during a photo session with me, along with what you get once you purchase, um, you know, different packages. Um, let's get started. Uh, we're going to go into the um, 17 inch by um, 17 by 24 frame. I already set it up with um, most of the pictures, but I'm going to put in this last one and show you how to do it because going through all nine is really just a, a, a step and repeat type of thing. But if I show you just one image, you'll get the idea. I've already opened up everything I'm going to need for this. Um, this is the last image I want to put in. It's um, I have it set up as actual size, but you can go in and change the size of the image before we put it into the frame so that you don't have to do as much scaling. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First you need to go to the top of the menu, click on image, go down to image size. And you'll see here that I have it set at um, 300 dpi, necessary for print. And right now it's at 11 by 16 inches. Now the frame that I put in, I made an actual size, so the, the, the square that we're going to put in is a 4 by 6. So let's just bring it down to about 4.25 for right now. And if you have constrained com proportions selected, it will automatically, here's what happens if you don't have it selected, because it will automatically set the, um, the proportion to the correct size if you lower just the width or if you uh, lower the, just the height. So if I don't put that in there, you'll see that it'll stay 16 um, inches on the other on the height. But if I have a, this selected and type in 4.25, it will automatically set the height. So go ahead and select OK. And we're going to copy by selecting all. Um, we're going to copy and paste. So select the entire image to copy, edit to copy, go back into the frame. Oops, it's the wrong frame. Uh, there it is, okay, <laughs> sorry. And then go edit to paste. All right, now I have this image right here. Um, I could have also clicked on this image and hit paste too, and the image would have popped up in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, action, that last action. So now I have a, the layers, all my um, images are on each layer. If I um, turn the little eye, um, icon off and on, you'll see that um, each image has its own layer so that I can move it and position it. Now if um, this image didn't come in and maybe it positions itself over here, you can just click and drag with your mouse and move it that image into the, um, the block where which it belongs. Now if you find that you have arranged your images and maybe you just don't like one because if you don't like the image and you want to try a new one, like, I don't particularly care for this image right here. I think it kind of looks like she's talking on the phone. You know, I'm still working on my poses. I haven't quite um, mastered everything yet. So I want to switch out this picture. I'm going to go to that layer. And I believe, let's see, it looks like it could be this one down here. I'm going to click it on and off just to double check. Okay, that is the image I want to delete. So I'm going to click on this little preview box on the layer. Um, hit Select All or Command A if you want to do the keyboard shortcut. And then I'm going to hit Delete on my keyboard. It takes a few minutes. And there the image is deleted. And I'm going to go in and find a new image. So I'm going to go to my folder that I have all my images on. I'm going to show on anybody that big. And it takes a few seconds because my everything is powering up. Oops. And let's see, I'm going to go into my client folder. Go into the high res and I'm going to preview. 
You can also open up Bridge and look through the images as well um, as another option to have that on the ready um, in case you want to switch out a picture. So I'm going to quickly go through these and see which one I like the best. Um, I don't believe I have that image. Uh, oh, I do? Okay, I do have that image in there. So let's keep looking. Uh, I need to get a vertical, not a horizontal. And I believe that one's in there as well. Yes. Uh, let's see. I kind of like that one. Just kind of kind of a good shot. I think it's a nice compliment, so I'm going to open up this image. And we're going to resize it image to image size. And I'm going to reduce it to 4.25. And hit OK. And I'm going to select all. Edit. Oops. Edit. Try it again. I accidentally select it off. Select all. Edit to copy. And go back into the frame. And hit edit to paste. Now. It's probably somewhere right here in the middle. It'll always paste something in the middle. So I'm going to click and drag, and here's my image. And I'm going to move it into position. I like to center things just above the head. All right, and you can, if you want to see exactly how big this image is, you can always go to the free transform and hit scale, and a bounding box will appear around the image. So this is the size of your image right now. So if you wanted to scale it down a little bit more, you could, but that is pretty um, pretty consistent with how a framer is going to um, put in your image. They want it to be just slightly bit larger than the cutout in the mat so that they have something to set the image on and, and um, tape it down and um, archive that onto your mat. So um, I'm kind of doing the same thing with this because I don't want to see the edge, um, the, behind, the behind of this layer, because I want it to look as if it's an actual um, matted and printed, uh, printed uh, pictures. So I'm going to hit return to delete that, um, make that bounding box go away. I'm going to move my arrow key because I want her to be up just a little bit higher, just to the tip of her head. Now we have all our images here. Um, say you want to kind of uh, rearrange the, um, the order of the images that you have it in. You simply need to click on the layer. See, I'm going to move this image around, this one on the bottom uh, right hand corner, and I'm going to switch it with the one in the middle. And I'm going to look for the middle image. Probably should label these now so that I can find them a little more quickly. Oh, here's the middle image. So I am going to click on that layer and move it over and swap out these images into a different box and go back to our new center image and move it over. I'm just using my mouse, but you can also click on that layer and move it with your little arrows on the, um, the arrow keys on your keyboard. So I think I like that a little bit better. And um, maybe I want to change this frame. You can change the color. You can actually add a texture to it. And I'm going to show you how to do both of those. If you just want to change the color, uh, maybe, you, maybe you're wanting to make it black and want to make it white, a white frame, just double click on that frame layer and go into color overlay and automatically red will, be, red will select itself but you can double click on that color and change it to any color that you want. You can kind of drag the slider up and change the color of the frame this way, change it to black um, or if you have a specific color um, in mind and you know the RGB settings for it you can put it in there. Say maybe you want a brown um, it's probably a little bit more of a red, so we're going to add a little more red to this one, 25. No, it's not quite there yet. Let's see. I think it's probably better in there. Maybe you want something a little more of a brown. Brownish gray, it's looking a little red. Well, you can type in the web color. You can type in an RGB color. If you know CMYK color, it won't matter because this is... Um, not going to be printed. Only print would need to use CMYK, but we're um, digital, so we're going to, we can pick it as an RGB color. So just select the color that you want, hit OK, and hit OK again from the layer style. And now you have a new color for your layer, for your frame. Now say you want to add like a texture, make it like a wood grain. You can go into a site like um, iStock.com or iStockphoto.com, show you right here. 
and you can buy stock images. Now say you want to put in a wood grain. Let's type in wood grain and oops grain. I'm not a very good speller or typer at the same time. So type in wood grain and you want it to be a tile pattern because you're going to have to repeat this and if it's not a, re a repeatable pattern you're going to see um, the image in little tiny blocks and it's not going to look right. So we're going to put in wood grain tile pattern and hit uh, search and you want to be more specific here so we're going to have to do it again. Go into illustration. Um, I don't think there's going to be many photos that are going to be repeatable images. It's always best to do an illustration and some some artists are very very good and you can find a good illustration that looks so close to a photo. So I'm going to type in wood grain tile and hit search. Okay. Now um, I I picked this one. This is I liked the co the color choices we had here, and I purchased this image already. Um, you can go through and look and see if, if there's other images, sorry, other wood grains that you like that that match better with your your style. And there's you can see they have quite a few options here, but you want to pick one that looks like it would fit on a frame. So I've already picked my color. I'm going to get out of this website. I'm oh, sorry. I already picked my um, my stock image. I'm going to go into the into the stock image right here. Already purchased. Now I just want to select the dark wood grain, and we're going to make it into a tileable image. So right now, what we need to do is scale it. So I'm going to select on select my um, scaling tool, and you'll see a little bounding box appear. It looks like marching ants with these little. Um, icons right here. I'm going to grab a corner and drag it in. Okay, and I don't know if it's quite up to there to the point of um, to butting up to the edge of that uh, tile. So I'm going to zoom in. Oops, I think I zoomed in too much. Try that again. I'm going to zoom in. Let go of my mouse and the zoom tool. Now, in order to do the keyboard shortcut, what I do is I held down my command key and my space bar, and that little icon up here. It looks like a little magnifying glass. And I just click and drag or click and drag my um, mouse until it gets to the size that I want to keep it at. And then I just release all of those buttons and the mouse and it releases the um, the bounding box. You can also click on the icon itself um, and do the same thing that I did rather than use a keyboard shortcut. I already ha I have it at the size that I want to crop it at. I'm going to hit crop and zoom back out so you can see the image. Now, um, in order to get it to tile onto the page, you could copy and paste this, but it won't. It may not, may or may not be big enough in order to fill that entire frame. So the best way to do this is to define it as a pattern. And we're going to go to Edit, Define Pattern, and it's going to select that thumbnail and type in um, a, a name for this particular tile so that you will always know what it's called. I'm going to call it dark wood grain. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to go back into my 11 by or sorry, 17 by 24 frame. And I am going to hold my command key down and and click on the frame um, the the little preview icon that's on the layer. And you'll see that the marching ants are going to appear throughout the entire frame. It's now selected. That's what this means. We're selecting just the frame. And I want to fill this frame with my new wood grain. So I'm going to go to Edit to Fill. And I'm going to use my pattern. So I'm going to select, uh, go on to Use, select Pattern, and I'm going to select the custom pattern. Now, wood grains are going to be selected for me because um, one, I've already done this and, and I, I have one already selected in here, and I added another one while I was just demonstrating to you. But the last one that you entered in, you defined a pattern, will show up at the very, very bottom of the list. So I am going to select wood grain, dark wood grain. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to take a minute and it's going to fill this entire frame with this new uh, wood texture. Okay. Oh, I need to take, I have a color overlay, so I'm going to take that color overlay off. If, um, if this happens to you and you have a color overlay on it already, click on the little effects um, arrow right here. And we're going to click on color overlay. And we're going to click and drag it down to the trash can right here because I don't want it anymore. And voila, there's your wood frame. 
you if you find that this may be too bright for you and maybe you want to make it even darker we can adjust the color let's go into image adjust um, let's go to color balance you can do this with hue and saturation too I prefer color balance and I'm gonna take out uh, add a little bit more blue a little more cyan to bring down that red and make it a little bit more brown make it a little darker a little more blue Maybe a touch more cyan. You can see how it's subtly changing color now. It looks a little more of a darker wood. Okay, so that's one way. If um, if you want to do like a metal, make sure you go into iStock and find a, a nice metal repeating frame. I'm sorry, repeating tile, so that you can do this same action. All right, now you if you want to change the color of the mat, because I think that this white isn't quite matching very well with this brown. And maybe you want to pick a cream color. Now we can do the same thing to change the color of this mat. I'm going to double click on the mat layer, go into color overlay. Um, oh, sorry, it's right there. And click in the color, um, uh, the color tile right here. And I'm going to pick kind of a yellowish color on this um, color uh, scale right here and pick something that is a little more of a creamy color. There we go. We hit OK. Hit OK. And now I've changed it to white to cream. I think it looks a little bit more, a little nicer. You can also add a text paper texture to this if you want, using the same thing that we did for the frame. I'm going to tile um, uh, select this frame by holding down the command key and clicking on, or sorry, selecting the mat, holding down the command key and clicking on the layer um, preview. And I selected only the mat. Now I'm going to go in and fill this, go to edit to fill with a new pattern. I already have pattern selected. Go into custom pattern and I'm going to select um, a paper. Let's see. Uh, oh, here it is. Gold vellum maybe? No. Let's do parchment. That's kind of neat. Now I'm going to click OK. I'm going to take a second to fill that with the pattern. And again, I had a color overlay on that already. So I'm going to click on the color overlay and drag it to the trash, bath, trash, bath, <laughs> trash bin icon and delete it. So now we have, and you can zoom in on this a little bit, you can see that there is a slight pattern to that um, a matte layer so it kind of it simulates a paper and we have a cut fully customized um, nine up matted digital frame that you can place into your uh, marketing PDF now this is a uh, again fully called fully customizable I also have this set up for um, if you purchase the the uh, frame other frame bundles um, I have a picture of Kaylee here and the 16 by 20 frame. You can copy your picture that you want to put in that 16 by 20 frame by selecting all, edit to copy. I'm going to go into the 16 by 20 frame, click on my layer that has um, I have already have set up for you, and hit edit to paste. And the picture of Kaylee will show up. This one is a little bit smaller. But since you're using, um, you're going to be scaling this this uh, frame down to fit onto a page. I can go ahead and increase the size of this image by um, going to Edit, Transform to Scale, and I'm going to um, click on the corner of this bounding box, drag with my mouse to the bottom uh, right corner to fit this image into the mat, and then I'm going to once I have it at the size I want, I'm going to hit Enter on my keyboard and set that image, and I'm going to click in on the image just to move it around and center it exactly where I want to into this mat. And again, if you want to change the, um, the color of the frame or you want to add in a tile texture, wood texture, metal texture, you can do that here. Um, now once you have this set to where you want, I think I want to um, maybe dull this image down a little bit. So I'm going to copy, I'm sorry, I'm going to fill this in again with a different color. I don't really like this texture. I think I'm going to change it to a lighter paper. 
Maybe the graph paper, no, graph paper doesn't look good. Let's see. Oh, I know. This linen weave looks really pretty and subtle. I'm going to fill it with that. Hmm. It's still kind of white. Uh, maybe you can change the color of this. Like, let's double click. I'm going to deselect. Hit Command D. Or you can hit Select to deselect so that you're not, um, you don't have the frame selected because you don't need to anymore. And I'm going to add a little bit more color to this. I'm going to hit Edit to adjust to um, color. I'm going to go here and saturation for this one. And I'm going to saturate it a little bit with a little bit more color and make that cream a little darker. Got it a little more subtle. I like that better. It's not as overpowering as the um, the crepe paper was. Okay. And then you can all zoom in so you can see it. This is a different texture. Kind of, it's it looks like a linen finish of paper. I think it looks really pretty. So now um, I'm ready to put this into my marketing PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and save this because I want to use it again. I'm going to do a save as, file, save as, and I'm going to put that into my um, folder for my marketing. So let's go into this, and I'm going to save it into my pricing guide, into frames, and I'm going to put it as edited. If you want to keep your original template, always make it a different name than the, than the original file. And I'm going to hit save because I'm saving my PSD file with the layers. Okay. Now I'm going to flatten this. Go to layer to flatten image. And you'll notice all of your layers are going to flatten into one. It's going to take a minute depending on how large the file is. This one's going to be quite large for right now because it's at full size at 300 dpi. Okay. Now that my image is flattened, I'm going to scale this down because it's going to fit into my um, magazine template and that's set at eight and a half, um, eight and a half by um, 17 right now, but the one page side is eight and a half by 11. And I don't want it to be bigger than that. So I'm going to bring it down to probably about eight inches high, uh, wide. Um, let's see, I'm going to go into image to image size and I'm going to bring this image down from 24 to eight inches and it will automatically set my height to 10. I'm going to hit OK and bring it back up to full scale so you can see this. And I'm going to go to Select All, Edit, Copy, and then I'm going to go into my, um, what do you call it, my, uh, <laughs> my PDF, and let's see, what did I do with it? Portrait series. Oh, I don't have a template opened. Let's see, I will open up a new template my PSD file so I can show you and my pricing guide PSD files all portraits let's do the series series there it is and I'm going to hit open I've already placed my image with a photo now because I just bought this this week. So until you have purchased your um, actual frame and take a photo of it, this digital file is going to be a great time saver for you. So I'm going to go ahead and hit paste, edit to paste. And I'm going to, now you can see the image appeared right here and on its new layer. And I'm going to label this lineup series frame. Okay. And it's obviously you can see it's a little too big for this page. So I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to hit edit, transform to scale. Hold down your shift key on your keyboard and select a corner of the bounding box and start dragging it down to the size that you desire. I'm going to release my mouse, release the shift key and hit enter on the keyboard because I like this size and I'm going to place it on my page. Okay, and again, I'm just eyeing this here. I want to add a little drop shadow because it's just not showing 
up. It's looking kind of flat. Doesn't look like it's a you know kind of up on the wall, which I'm again I'm simulating this idea of this um, background being a wall. So I'm going to double click on my uh, new nine series frame, and I'm going to select um, drop shadow. There's drop shadow right there, <clears throat> and just to exaggerate again and show you where the drop shadow is showing. You can see that it appears right here now in the corner of the frame. You can adjust um, the angle at which you want to have it. Say you want your shadow to appear to the left, or maybe you want um, it to appear down at the bottom. Now this depends on where you see light hitting this image. Because naturally, if light is hitting down, the shadow will cast down from this frame. If light is hitting from this angle, you're going to have to adjust your angle in the degrees so that if light was hitting here, it would cast a shadow of this direction. And same goes here. If you have light coming from this direction, the shadow will then cast this direction. And you can just adjust it there. Now I'm going to go back to uh, adjusting my shadow to the right. I think I like it there better. And it just seems too dark uh, because you can't, you know, not naturally will the shadow appear quite this dark unless it's really close to the wall, the intensity of the light that's hitting it. I'm imagining that it's window light, it's very soft, so I'm going to bring this down to probably about 35, uh, maybe 40, it still looks a little too light. And the distance, I like to leave it about 20, and same with the size at about 20, 25. And I think right there looks pretty natural, and I like the definition and um, the, the effect that's coming that looks like it's just slightly off the wall and that the thickness of that frame is a little bit, uh, maybe probably an inch or two, I mean, not an inch, half an inch of thickness for that frame. And I'm gonna hit OK. All right, and maybe I wanna change the text because it's just kind of bumping up a little bit here. I want to put this all on one line, and then I wanna center the text. I hit Command A um, to select all that text. I'm gonna go up here and center click off and move my text down underneath my frame and I want to change the color white on this cream is not working and I'm going to hit um, command A to select all my text or you can use your cursor and click and drag across. I'm going to change my text to um, maybe a gray and let's see I'm going to select this dark gray and then hit OK. And there is your text. All right. And maybe I don't like the color of this background because I think it might be clashing with my mat. I'm going to double click on this layer and fill it with a new color. So I'm going to hit um, double click on that layer, color overlay, and change the color of my wall, maybe to a nice neutral gray. Make that frame pop out a little bit more. Good, there we go, hit OK. And there you go, now we have a new frame, we have it customized to your look, and it's now placed on your PDF. All right, I hope you have fun making um, your picture frames, and I'm gonna go off and do the next tutorial. Have a good day.